Hello guys, now in this video we'll be talking about receptor tyrosine kinase. You know it's a very very important family of receptors and most of the important signalings are actually using this receptor tyrosine kinase. So let's talk about this in, in much more detail. So let me take a color here. Okay, so let's begin with it. You know, uh, so let's first talk about the structure of receptor tyrosine kinase or simply some people also call it tyrosine kinase receptor, whatever it is, but it will look something like that because for the proper signaling using receptor tyrosine kinase, we require to have a, you know, dimer, we require to have a dimer of that. So as you can see here, there are monomers, two monomers will form one dimer, actually they present as monomer. In, in, and they are embedded inside the cell membrane, right? And how they embedded, as you can look at the structure, it, you can see majorly three different sections. One is the signal binding side, that is the outermost section, section number one. Second section is, uh, you know, alpha helix uh, containing region, which is very, very important to be embedded inside the cell membrane. Because, you know, uh, most of the proteins which are embedded inside the cell membrane should contain alpha helix structure because of their favor for membrane entrapment or membrane embedding. Okay, so this is the second part. And third part, which is the longest part of this protein molecule, is the signaling relay part that is made up with entirely tyrosine molecules. That's why the name comes from tyrosine kinase uh, receptor. You know, kinase means, kinase is a typical name of all those proteins, who each, the job of whose is actually to phosphorylate thing, phosphorylate phosphorylate other proteins. So kinase means certain proteins or enzymes which will phosphorylate other proteins using energy from ATP, right? And that's the job of this receptor tyrosine kinase. And why it is tyrosine kinase? Because the, in, in the integral part of this, of this protein, the membrane part of this protein is entirely made up with tyrosine residues to carry the signal, right? To be modified and relay the signal uh, to the next level. Right? That's why it's called as receptor tyrosine kinase because you know we are having a receptor side then tyrosine field inner moiety of the pro of this protein. Right? So, so, so now, now let's talk about the general feature of this tyrosine kinase receptor and how the signaling actually works. So here comes a signaling molecule. Right? You know this is the inner and this is the cytoplasm. This is the extracellular region. Signaling molecule will come and sit on to any one of this uh, signal binding side and that's what is going to happen here. So signaling molecule is coming and they will attach with the signal binding region and once they bind uh, to the signal binding region, so you can see here, after this binding, look this very very much carefully. We can see this monomer and the distant relation, distant part, so they are placed in, in a slight distance with each other. Once signaling molecules will come and attach to both of this, di uh, both of these monomers, and both of the signal binding side of the monomer, then they will come close to each other and they will fuse with each other to form a dimer. So two monomers after binding with signaling molecule will form a dimer. As you can see here, now this is a dimer structure, believe me, right? So this is the dimer that is formed, right? Once the dimer is formed, as you can see, so let's, let's zoom it a little bit. So this is the dimer which is formed, right? And then it will be phosphorylated because that's the major task. Now, the very, very important property of receptor tyrosine kinase is, is that as it is a kinase molecule, obviously it will be, it will phosphorylate other molecules, but very first time when it's getting the, all those, all those signal and they will form the dimer, it will phosphorylate itself. So the first type of phosphorylation here is auto, auto phosphorylation autophosphorylation works. So, they will phosphorylate each other. So, the tyrosine that is present, the kinase feature of this tyrosine that is present there, this, this set or this monomer will phosphorylate the kinosine on the other monomer and vice versa. So, it will take the ATP. So, let me draw ATP is taken to phosphorylate and actually in this case it will require 6 ATPs because 3 ATP for this tyrosine, 3 ATP for this tyrosine. So, 6 ATPs are required total uh, to, you know, phosphorylate each other. So, once the phosphorylation is done, as you can see here, now they are phosphorylated. Now, they are ready to relay this signal to the next level. And there are other cell signaling molecules that are present inside the cell, you know. They are secondary trans signaling molecules and 
tertiary molecules they are present so the, those secondary molecules the secondary messengers that are present inside the cell they will come and interact with this phosphate containing domain of this tyrosine kinase receptor so the, now these are the molecules you know they will come and attach to this phosphate binding region they'll get the signal and they will relay this signal to the next level and then finally that signal will go to some transcription transcription ultimately they will go to transcription regulation unit transcription regulation unit and transcription regulation unit will bring that signal inside you know inside the nucleus and that's sorry one minute there's a problem okay so it will bring that signal inside the nucleus remember because that's a very very important region because inside the nucleus there is the presence of all these all these DNA and parts so it is the DNA for example uh, so they will bring that signal inside and then do all the job right so this is the final job but the major part of the receptor tyrosine kinase is to autophosphorylate itself that's the first thing and second thing is phosphorylating other molecules like here this is the second part of the phosphorylation that is the kinase activity phosphorylating other messenger protein or relaying proteins but first is self phosphorylation so these are the features of receptor tyrosine kinase guys and i hope that's helpful thank you very much